everybody, it's Cheryl, Lead Off Leash Canine Training. Today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about markers. Markers are really helpful in dog training. They will help accelerate the learning for your dog and just make things move more smoothly and easily and the communication will be more spot on if you incorporate this in your dog training. So markers are something that will mark a specific moment in time or a specific physical action your dog has done at a exact moment. So if you've ever heard of clicker training, that's a marker. I use three different marker words. I use yes, good, and nope. So usually the yes and the good will be followed up with a reward, and nope initially will be followed up with a correction because nope is trying to tell the dog don't do that again, and yes and good is trying to encourage that behavior. I have a bag of treats here. My dog is standing over there, and I'm going to keep this on him while I pick up the bag. What do you think he thinks? He thinks that sound means something good is coming my way. So this crinkling sound, that's a marker. The sound of kibble in a bowl, do you see that head tilt? That's a marker. So those sounds are marking a moment in time when the dog is anticipating something good is happening. And that is the marker word yes for me. So I use that to train obedience commands and keep the dog interested and excited about whatever it is they're doing. And sometimes not just food, I'll use a toy for the yes command. This encourages drive in a dog and it's getting a dog to want to do repetitions and keep going at it and keep trying. So that's how I use yes. Very similar to the sound of kibble and bowl. Eventually, I don't want to have to carry food around anymore, and so I get off the word yes. Once the dog really knows the command and is understanding at it eight times out of ten, nine times out of ten, then I'm going to move on to the word good, which means keep doing what you're doing. It encourages duration in a given command. And sometimes I might bring you a treat. And then the final marker I use is nope. And that's usually followed by a correction of some sort. It could be a physical touch, it could be a slap of my hands, a stomp of my foot, a tap on an e-collar, a little leash pop, something that will discourage the dog from doing that behavior in the future. So one thing about markers is you want to separate it by a second. So you would say the word yes and then feed. You would say the word good and then feed. You would say the word nope and then clap, or shaker can, or poke, whatever it is. You don't want to say nope or yes as the dog's eating. You don't want to say it like that. If you put them together, then the dog's just really responding to the physical thing that's happening, the food, or the poke, or the startle. So you want to separate them by a second, because that gives more relevance or more meaning to that marker word. So you say yes, and then you move to give them food. You say, good, and then you move to give them food. You say, nope, and then you move to give them that little correction, whatever it may be. And over time, if you do that really well, with good timing, now the word has way more meaning and way more relevance because you followed up the words with some sort of physical action, whether it's feeding or throwing the ball for good and yes, or a startle out of whatever the dog's doing for the nope. So let's put all this into action. Let me show you with my dog how these words come into play in everyday life with him. And if you watch my training videos, you'll see how I use yes a lot when new dogs come. All right, here we go. The first thing I do with any dog that comes in for training in a board and train is to teach them what the word yes means as a marker. Some people call it loading the clicker if you're using a clicker. So I'm just loading the meaning to the word yes. So every time he looks at me, he's going to hear a yes, and then he's going to move toward me to eat. So he sees it over here, yes. Yes. I'm trying to keep it so you can see his, eye, his eyes. Yes! Good. Yes! 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 I did mention 
clicker training. So a clicker, this is a clicker. They hear that sound and he wants food. He knows it. I, I've used clickers with him and done some clicker training, but I personally don't want to have to have too many things going on. I already have my phone. I already have treats. I have all kinds of things. But did you see that look? That's what you're going for when you're teaching the yes command. You want that head to, to flip around like that. And so it's kind of like the treat bag. You see his, his ears pop up when I do it? And I want the same thing with the yes. So let's see if I get him distracted. Let's go. Let's just get him distracted. Yes! You see how he flipped his head around? Let's go break. Go get it. Yes! You see how he came running back for that yes? So once your dog is doing that, you're ready to incorporate it into your training to help them know what you want and to be more precise in your communication and to, like I said earlier, escalate and smooth out the teaching. So let's try it with the place command. For me, place command is to get on the bed and lie down. But in, in this video, I want to keep him kind of rocking and rolling and having a little bit of fun with it. So I'm going to mark his fourth paw getting on the place cot with the yes, and you're going to see him come running back to me for the treat. Let's go. Place. Yes. He was going to give me the lie down. So actually, I probably messed up because now he's just going to do the fourth paw, which is fine for this. Now to place. Yes. Place. To a good. To have a place. Good. And notice how I say the word good. It's a little bit more grounding and calming. Yes! And good. Good. So good means keep doing what you're doing. Sometimes I'll give you a treat. Sometimes I won't. Keep doing what you're doing until I give you another command or a release word. Good also in itself is a reward. Good is almost like saying stay. Is as human beings, we wouldn't be walking with our dog saying stay, 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 because we're moving. And it doesn't make sense in our vocabulary to say stay if we're moving. But we could be saying good, good, good. And it's marking and reminding them of what they're doing is what they should be doing and to keep doing it. Good. Just like that. So it is, in my mind, the way I see it is kind of like saying stay, but I don't use the word stay. I just say the word good, which means keep doing it. And then finally, release. He can get up. So there's something I want to add, and that is you'll hear me say good when a dog does something well in my videos, but you'll also hear me say good boy, good boy, good boy. And to me, those are different applications of the word good. Our human ear is hearing the same thing, but for Tayoga, when I say come, come, good boy, good boy, good boy, it kind of brings some levity and lightness into what it is he's doing. It's like a cheerleading thing a little bit, like a, like a verbal lure place. Down. Good. That's different. When I just say good like that, it's like, stay, keep doing what you're doing. You're doing good, good boy. It's like a calming versus, huh? Good boy, good boy, is it? Good. So I just want to throw that in there. I mean, we hear the same thing, but in my application, in my mind, and I think the dog is picking up on this, I'm using it very differently. Good boy, good girl. That's like I said, a verbal lure down. Relax, good. That's a calming, like, stay put. So I truly believe the way I train dogs that they're noticing, they don't know the word so much, just the tone I'm using with it. So I just wanted to include that in there as well. Okay, so that's yes, and that's the good. Now let's show you, I mean, if he knows the word nope, he knows it. But I'm going to actually do uh, probably a foot stomp and if I'm next to him, maybe a little bit of a finger pop. 
poke right to here, or sometimes I do a little tap there, like he doesn't like that. Not hard, but just enough to startle him out. So I'm going to throw food all over the floor, and I don't know what physical touch I'll do or what physical startle I'll do for him, but I'm going to first say nope when he starts to go for it. So watch the timing of this. Nope. So I don't need to do the physical follow-up, so I don't really want to. Nope. Actually, I did. Good. And if a dog were just learning, I might actually say good when they look back to me. But he didn't see. And he did one. So let's do something like that again. And if you do this with your dog once or twice, you drop food on the floor, they're not going to go pick it up. If you're effective and efficient in whatever it is you use as a physical startle, I'll use my foot stamp. No! Nope. He caught one, which is kind of funny, actually. Um, but you saw him startle with my foot stomp. <laughs> I like that you caught one. So I'm not going to throw it over his head. He is a retriever. Let's just kind of slide it. No! Nope. Good. No! Nope. Good. So that was an example of the marker word note. I said the word as he started doing something I didn't like, and then I followed up with a finger tap or a foot stomp, and it startled him out of doing that behavior which I wasn't liking, which was going for the food. All right, to recap what we talked about, marker words, yes, good, and note. Remember, you need to pair the marker word with an action. And that gives relevance and meaning to the word. So for good and yes, you want to pair that with something is good is coming in my way. You want to pair it with food, toy, pets, something that's going to motivate the dog to want to keep doing that. Conversely, you want to pair the word no with something unfavorable, whether it's a foot stomp or a shaker can, whatever it is that startles the dog out of the behavior that you don't like. You don't want to say the word at the same time that you're doing, giving that little reinforcement, whether it's a correction or, or a reward. You want to have a word, physical action. Word, physical action. Because over time, this part can go away. Just the word gets the dog to do what you want. And I'm going to show you, just at the very end of this video outside with him, what I do and how I use these marker words for him outside in, in our real world application together. So yes, good, no. Yes can go away over time. Once the dog knows what the command means and you don't want to have to carry food anymore and you're not really teaching that command anymore, you can get rid of yes and the food. That's what I do in my training. And then if you ever want to teach something new, you can go back to yes. Or if you want to clean something up, maybe they're not laying all the way down on the place cut and they're just sitting. So you just wait and finally they lay down and you say yes and you see them get fired up again because they're like, oh, I remember what this means. It means food. So yes leaves, but it can come back when you're trying to train something new for your dog. And nope just becomes nope. You don't usually have to follow it up with anything anymore. Once you get to a place where they, you've been really effective with your nope and pairing it with something, and it shouldn't, it shouldn't really take that long. If you are saying nope and doing a physical correction more than two times, three times for the, for the same thing, you're not being effective enough. So you need to maybe up your ante. But it doesn't take long. I mean, I can get... Literally, a dog I've never met, I can drop food on the floor, say nope, and startle them somehow, once, twice at the, at the most, and they're done. Around me, when I drop food, they don't, they don't go for it anymore. And then at the same time, I say good, and I feed them for not going for the food that's on the floor. So I'm using a marker word that isn't quite ready for them, but I'm still incorporating that into that lesson with them. I hope that made sense. So I hope this helps all of you out there. Start using markers in your training and keep watching just for another few moments to watch Tioga out there in real life application with our life together. Okay, we're going to go outside and this guy's ball is out here. You're going to hear me say nope to him. Let's go.
Good. Good boy. See how it stopped him in his tracks from picking up that ball? So that nope in his life has been followed up with some sort of correction. Like I said, a physical something that startles him out of whatever he's doing. Go get it. You're free to go do what you want. Come. Good boy. Drop. Yes. Come. Sit. Yes. So he doesn't want the food. I'm just going to do the ball with him. Because that's more of a motivator for him. Come. Good boy. Mark him looking at me? Yes. So he looked at me and I marked it with a yes, which means he can go get it. One thing I want to note in my application with Tioga, with where we are in life, is it's just pretty much nope and good. And nope is basically saying incorrect, and good is saying correct. Or if you remember that game when you were a kid, the hot cold game, and let's say I am trying to tell my shadow to get over to this rock. So if they went this way, I'd say cold, cold. If they went this way, I'd say warm, 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 hot, hot, hot. So it's kind of the same thing. If I say nope to Tioga, that's a cold. If I say good, that's a hot. Let's see. Let's try it one more time with the ball. Release. Drop. Good. Come. Good. Sit. Good. Release. Nope. Nope. Good. Release. Kind of like that. I don't know if that makes sense, but hopefully it does. So eventually you just get to the point where drop. Get that. Get that. Nope. Good. Release. You get to the point where you're just noping and gooding your dog, and they really understand the communication about it, around it. All right. Have a good one, everybody. Bye. Release.